things. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit about something I'm pretty passionate about that's been around for a long time that I learned at my old age, which is about um, a business model called employee ownership. Very unusual. People think it wouldn't happen from traditional world. I can tell you it's happening and it's thriving in this country. And the women are at the leadership of this invest. So what is it? I call it getting rid of the bosses. Um, <laughs> there's pros and cons of getting rid of uh, bosses and employee-owned cooperative. And one of the things that it's old, I call it old is new again, because this was started after the Industrial Revolution and people that, who were really upset about the way business dignified and used people as a piece of machinery. And so employee ownership came out. So let me ask you in this audience, how many, people, how many women here own their own company? Excellent. How many women, very good. How many women want to run their own company someday? Yeah. Excellent. And how many want to have a voice in the companies that they run today? Absolutely applaud yourself. So what is an employee-owned cooperative? One of the things I want to talk about, an employee-owned cooperative is a democratic decision-making process where everyone has one vote for one person. The CEO in our company has the same vote as our installer. It is a process for best organizational decisions. No one of us is as smart as the collective organization. When we give voice to those organizations, we have a better chance of making good decisions. Better morale and personal fulfillment and we have a higher retention because everyone has a stake in this game. It is a model to equally share our profits of our combined hard work in an ownership structure. We are not here to make another billionaire in a, two offices or houses somewhere in the Bahamas. We are here to make sure that everybody has a right to fulfill their dreams and their ability to bring their kids to school you know, give them a college education, have a home. That is our desire. It is a, also a process to dignify the human work that we bring to the plate for each one of these projects. Okay? That is what employee-owned cooperation is. What is it not? It is not a social experiment. This is a solid business model that works and brings about some of the highest profits in the in this industry it is a business model it is not a business model for flipping those who are involved in our organization do not expect to sell this company at any time soon we've had lots of offers it's not what this is about we do bring about investors that want to invest in the company make a bunch of money and leave that is not what this model is if that's what you're looking at this is not the model to start your new business it is a not it is a model that is not a rocket fast process in making decisions. One of the differences in the company, and we're going to talk about when it was 20 people in the company, we could all decide what type of toilet paper to bring about. Today it's 173 and will probably be 200 and soon, so we have to change the way we do things. The process has been streamlined so we can make decisions faster in what we call a distributed leadership style. Um, but the difference is, you know, it may take you a little bit longer to make a decision, but once it's made, everybody's on board. I, I worked for years and years in large corporations where the boss and sometimes bosses myself would come in and say, hey, tomorrow we're going to sell green refrigerators. And everybody goes, oh gosh, that's a great idea, boss. And we leave, I leave the room, they're like, And, and we've all seen that, right? How many people have seen that in companies with the bosses? Right. In, in this way, we all make the decision together on our team. The team lead that I am may be overruled, but I guarantee at the end of the day, we have a better chance of making a good decision. What is this not? It's not a new business model. It's been around, for, as I said, since the Industrial Revolution, and it's re seen a resurgence in today's version of it. And what is it not? It is not for everyone. One of the things that we have learned with our company is we have to recruit a certain personality that wants to do it. 
It's a certain personality that wants to take personal responsibility for decisions, wants to play a part in it, and doesn't have an ego that says every one of the decisions have to be mine. Today, there are 320 Democratic workplaces that employ 23,000 employees or more. This has been a worker cooperative, as I said, rose during the Industrial Revolution. It has a modern version, and I will tell you, women are at the forefront of doing this. They have the ability to collaborate, and they have the ability to make decisions together, and that's why they're leading this business model. Um, I'm going to go through this real fast because I'm running out of time. Value of the cooperative is policies can't be de uh, determined by an investor. It is made by the employees themselves. Our investors have no voting rights, but we give a good um, dividend on it. We provide workers options and greater freedom to resolve um, workplace problems, and our quality of workmanship is some of the highest because everybody's got their hands on it. The downside, instead of a single boss, you may have four coworkers all have opinions. That's something you have to work on. You have to have a profit-minded investor because one who's looking to make a, bu a bunch of money and leave would not touch this model with a 10-foot pole. Okay, would we change? Absolutely not. These are some of the things that make our system very, very um, effective. We have some of the best business efficiencies in our industry. We have some of the best employee commitment and dedication because their name is on every one of these projects. Has it worked? Well, I don't know, has it worked? Been around for 12 years. We've gone from 20 to, as I said, about 173 employees. We're one of the top 25 um, co solar companies in the, the nation. We've been listed on many um, places as one of the most democratic places. Every year we've made a profit. And if you're in the solar industry and you know <laughs> that you made a profit, sometimes not much, but we did make a profit. Uh, we're 13 years old, 95% 95 are co-workers. You have to be there a year and then you get a mentor that helps you go through the process and then you get voted in if you wanna be a, a um, owner or not. We have offices in Boulder, Denver, New York, California. We're learning a lot as we expand from 20 people that are now um, in four different locations. Uh, what is our mission? I bet everybody here knows our missions. Um, we have a new person in our company um, that's here right now, and I'm going to ask her to read what our, what our mission is because we believe it. It's not what the boss said. This is what we established. Liz, we, I'm going to throw you under the bus and ask you to read it. <laughs> we work to propagate the responsible use of solar energy, pioneer conscientious business practices, and create holistic wealth for ourselves and our community. Very good. And so that is Namaste Solar, and I thank you for allowing me to talk about this model that's important to us. Thank you.